This padding separated from, I guess, the shoe. And so it jammed up and basically, it's the first time this has ever happened for me. Uh, basically locked up my rear end. Good day everyone, here I am. I'm sitting in my Saturn Ion, it's a 2003. We're gonna do the rear brakes from start to finish. And this also applies, I believe, all the way up to uh, 2007. Should be exactly the same brakes. I looked up the parts for the 2007. It's the same set of brake uh, pads that you need for the rear, so to me that means they're the same. So before you even do anything, um, you're gonna have to take a look at your parking brake here because you need to do this first, trust me. Basically take the boot off because we have to take some of the pressure off of the parking brake spring that It'll be self-explanatory once we get going, but there's a little bolt here, or a nut on a, on a bolt, and basically it's a 10, let me see here, yeah, it's a 10 mil, so get that on there and turn it counterclockwise, loosen it up, and you'll know it's loose because your parking brake will be, it doesn't really engage, it's sort of sloppy, it shouldn't be like that, if yours is like that, by the way, um, you'll be able to fix that up during this video too, but you have to release the pressure It'll become evident once uh, we get into the into the business. So just loosen that up Just be able to move it around a little bit Okay, so let's go on to the next step Okay, so here we are at the tire now if you've never taken off one of these tires uh, Basically what you need to do is take off this uh, center cap They just pull off no big deal and the first thing you want to do, now I have my own uh, socket and, and uh, bar here, but in the trunk you should find where the spare tire is, you should find a, a tire iron that will take off these nuts. I just prefer to use this. And what we're going to do at this point, you're just going to loosen them. Just give them a loosen. The car needs to be on the ground, don't have it on a jack yet. Just loosen them a couple turns. The reason I use this bar is it's nice and long. You have a lot of leverage. If things are a little bit sticky, it's much easier. But there you go. It's loosened up. So let's go get the jack and put it underneath here. You basically line up the jack. I won't be able to show you on the video really exactly where, but you'll see the uh, sort of like the axle or the brace, the main bar that goes across. Just line your jack up under there and jack it up. So let's do that. All right, there we go. Now we can uh, continue on taking off the lug nuts. All right, now, get this drum off. Normally, see, I'm just checking it here. But yeah, it's pretty, it feels like it's pretty jammed on there. Plus there are these, I'm just gonna show you really close. If this has, if this drum has never been off, there's a couple of little retainers on there. So these, they're not actually required to be on here in the end, but I guess at the factory put, they put those on. So let's go ahead, I'll 
get a screwdriver for this and uh, we'll pop those off. Okay, so I took one off. Um, to take these off, there's really no easy way to do it, really. Um, you can get them to turn a little bit, which will probably lift them. Sometime, well, sometimes they will turn off. Um, but other times, they won't. So don't really worry too much if you end up damaging this, because it, in the end, it doesn't really do anything. Um, so yeah, it's only, just basically get back there and start popping it off. Just work it back and forth, go to each side. So this feels like it's pretty jammed on. So what you can do, I don't even know if I have any WD-40, but um, spray around here basically around this center piece and you could spray a little bit in the where the threads are that might help things along but I'll show you how to do this hang on so anyways got a little bit of WD-40 or something this is all I could find it's just some sort of rust check stuff but this will work too just gonna give that a little spray if you're short on spray give it a little spray and just a little shot of um, actual brake cleaner it will just work that stuff into the all the little uh, crevices we'll just make the oil flow in there that's what I do anyway and the next thing you need to do now I'm gonna probably uh, I'll mute this out because it'll get loud but you need a nice big uh, hammer I like this one with the edge on it because I can actually use it as a pry bar also once I get this coming off here but 99.9% .9 of the time gonna end up having to give this a few whacks so here we go there we go voila Okay, once you uh, take the drum off, look at it. Look at its condition, look for any cracks. Um, if the wear looks really nice in there, you'll be fine. You won't have to get it resurfaced or you won't have to buy a new one, a new drum. You'll just need the brake pads. This one looks in pretty good shape. I don't see any cracks, so we're good to go. So let's get these brake pads off. Okay, quickly before we get rolling again here, Take some precautions, I, of course I have my jack under there, put a jack stand under your vehicle in case your hydraulic jack fails, and a common practice I always throw a tire under there too, at least it's not going to drop right down to the ground, um, you know, just take precautions, uh, do some research, because there are dangers here. So uh, let's get back to the brakes here. So the biggest challenge you're going to have doing these rear brakes, um, well, first of all, look for any leaks. If there's leaks, you have more issues than what we're going to deal with today. This is the little hydraulic cylinder. If it's leaking, you're going to have to replace it, um, and that entails a whole new adventure. So yeah, this guy here, if it's leaking, that's sort of bad news, but it's easily replaced. Then we'd have to get into a whole video about brakes, bleeding brakes and all that stuff. Not going to do that here today, we're just replacing the, the pads here. So the biggest challenge to replace the pads is this single spring that holds the pads basically in place. Now you can get a tool and I believe it's called a single spring brake kit or brake removal kit and it's mostly I think GM have this, I'm not sure. But I'll show you how to do this without getting that, but really I would recommend if you have the extra box, go and get one. I think they're like 40 bucks and uh, that will help you a lot. But so far we've determined that the actual drum is good, so that saved us 80 and I'm not buying the brake removal kit or the spring removal kit. That's another 40, so I've already saved, you know, what, uh, 120 bucks. So we'll give it a go and uh, hopefully it will work out for us here. So let's get this spring out and I can't tell you 
be very conscious of where your hands are and where your fingers are. You don't want your hand in here when you're pulling this out because this spring is going to snap right into the center there. So if you have a pair of pliers, you should just be able to grab hold of it. You might have to hold the shoe. And there, that one's released. Go over to the other side, same thing. Might have to hold the shoe, pull it out, and that one's released also. Okay, so now we're set. Take your pliers. There's a spring right here. Um, yeah, right here. I'll try to do this. I don't think I can do that with one hand, but hey, let me get this set up. There we go. There's a spring here that hooks onto this. So we need to pull the spring back and detach it. It's just on a little tab. There we go. So remove that, set it down nice. I like to set things down how they came off the vehicle. So I'll set it down here. Okay, we'll knock the shoes off here now. I'm just gonna grab hold the pliers, loosen things up. This is actually the uh, brake adjustment clip. It just fell off, that's no big deal. We'll set it down. That's how it was on, we'll set it down. And I will just pull off. This is the adjuster. We'll clean that up, came off that way. We'll set it down. And I'm just gonna pull the other brake shoe or pad off. So this is the one that the parking brake attaches to. Let me line the camera up here. Now this can be a bit of a pain and that is why at the beginning of the video I told you to uh, loosen up the tension on the parking brake inside the car. It's pretty much vital to get this off. Otherwise there's a spring back here and there's just too much load on it. And yeah, it's gonna cause you a lot of trouble. So to get this off now that we've unloaded all that pressure, you can just push, push up, push up. And it should, should slide out. Just need a little bit. All right. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes not. I'm just compressing the spring a little bit. There we go. Hold it in place. And I should be able to get that off of there. It's never easy, remember. Working on your car. Just a matter of compressing the spring and then pulling this cable out. The uh, new shoes, they, they design them a little bit different. It's not quite as difficult as this. They put a big notch in here. It's really hard to get this past the notch sometimes. There we go. Straighten that out. Okay, so we have that off. It's a pain. Trust me. All right, I'll get set up. I'll get uh, the parts we need and I'll show you the next process. All right, before we get rolling here, I'm gonna use a little bit of this brake cleaner. Uh, just to clean up, get the garbage out of here. you want there's certain parts here I'll show you in a second here things need to be a little bit cleaned up here and I don't believe a person wants to get this stuff on your actual uh, the brake shoes or the brake pad material so make sure they're not laying down below I put a piece of cardboard down here otherwise it's gonna make a big mess uh, this just soaks into the cardboard and it'll dry really quick. 
But yeah, I think we're uh, we're good here. Um, clean off the adjuster a bit on that spring. There we go. Everything looking good. All right. Next, the uh, next step coming up here. I'll go get the uh, brake shoes, and voila, we'll get at her. Okay. And actually, before I should have done this before, but before you screw this in, take a little bit of lithium grease. Put that on the threads. You don't need much. I'll turn this back in so you can get the idea. And also, you need a tiny bit of, just put a little little dab in here. It's going to help this piece rotate. There we go. And the next thing you want to do, now you'll be able to see this, you won't see all of them on the video, but there's little contact points. Usually you'll see some rust there, where the uh, shoes contact this inner side. So again, take some grease and put it on all these little contact points. If you can't tell in the video, you'll be able to tell when you're looking at it. Basically this will help the shoes slide around and adjust themselves. There we go, perfect. And while you're at it, now a lot of people won't do this, but I will put a little, just a little bit of this grease right on the sort of the, I guess this is kind of like the axle. Uh, when your tire's on here, when you go to remove it in the future, it's gonna help things, trust me. Get some around here. You might not appreciate it, but one day if someone else is working on it, they will also appreciate it. And you notice how my lug nuts came off so nice? I always put a little, just a little bit of this grease on the threads. And we're all set. I'll go get my uh, shoes here. Okay, so let's get the first one on. The first pad, the one that has the uh, parking brake attachment. It's going to be much easier to put on because they designed it a little bit different. Uh, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit wider here. So this is sort of the configuration. Have it like this. See how I have this set up here, and basically push the spring in, and it's on already. And what you're going to have to do, rotate it around. Make sure it stays on there and then it just slides into place like this. So I'll see if it will stay in place, but it might not because we have to put that big spring in. <clears throat> so I think I'm just gonna leave this hanging down here. It's ready to go. The other side we really don't have to worry about until we get the spring sort of attached. So let's put that up into position. Hopefully you can see. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and we'll rotate that around. Now, the spring is going to be low, so you're going to have to grab the spring, pull it out. And things aren't going to be perfect here, but we kind of have the pads sort of in place. Need to pull this out a bit, a bit more. Get the whole pad underneath there. Oops. Okay, so it's. it's it's kind of in place now. 
there's the neighbor with their lawn tractor. Of course, once I start doing a video, what happens? They start the lawn tractor. So let's move on to the other side. So again, kind of get it lined up here. And again, try to get the bottom part under that spring. And then we'll pull the spring out. I hope you can see that. You kind of put the pad in underneath that spring at the bottom. And let's get our pliers here. Keep our fingers crossed. I hope this works. Ideally, you can get this lined up in there, but it doesn't always work out that easily. But So now I'm going to grab the spring, pull it. And... Like this, as I say, that's not easy. But there we go. That one's in. This one's still not in. Now I'll come back here. This is why that little uh, spring uh, removal machine might work well. But we'll get her. Oh, just, whoa. Just, it does take a lot of effort. Uh, okay. I'll just switch hands here. There we go. Oh my goodness. Sorry for all the grunting and groaning, but it really isn't that friendly. Um, now it's a matter of making sure the shoes are up in place. See, this one is not, it's not lined up in that groove anymore, but we can pull that back. And there we go. Okay, we'll move to the next step here. We're, we're almost there. Okay, so we want to put in the brake adjuster. Now, if it's come apart, because we put some grease on there, there's a little clip right here. There's a notch here, the big part here fits there. And then there's a little notch here that fits there. So just put this in here. The big uh, side of the clip goes to the back. Uh, the bulk goes to the front. And the long arm goes to there. So let's put this in here. And you're gonna have to grab one of the shoes. And use your hand pull it out so it snaps in then compresses back and I can't tell you more make sure that the little tabs on the top of the shoes are nice are very aligned in the cylinder here um, they need to be nice and square and so now we are set for the next step okay so ideally you have a little bit of play not much Maybe about a quarter, eighth of an inch in there. And now we have to put on the, this one of the adjuster, the adjuster clip here. I don't know the proper name. I'm just gonna call it the adjuster clip. But you need to fit this up in here. I have to get this a little closer here. But anyways, this will fit up in here. snap onto this there we go so that's sort of in place but now we get need to get the spring attached so remember here's the spring that just fits here right there very parallel if you're up here that's no good it needs to be over here there's a little hole just right above that adjuster and we'll get our pliers
and then we'll pull it over to this little tab. There we go. So now that's in place. Good stuff. At this point, remember there's gonna be a little bit of play in here. You don't want too much. Actually, it's, it, well, I think we did a good job here because there's no play now once it sort of, once you put that spring in, it pulled things together. So let's go ahead, get the drum on. And the drum's gonna fit on a little bit tight. That's very normal. And as long as it's not super tight, you might need your hammer a little bit. And so it should slide on, like there's, there'll be a little bit of friction in there, which is really good. If that's the case, then everything's fine. So it might, might not spin perfectly, but you can still turn it by hand. And that means that you're, you're pretty much ready to go. So let's get this tire on and uh, we'll go from there. And PS, if, if it's really hard to get on, that means you have to turn that that adjuster, you have to turn it in a little bit more so that the pads or the shoes can come together a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, we lucked out here. Everything's looking good. Okay, I put the tire up into place. I just uh, loosely tighten these by, by hand so that you start them, so that you know the threads aren't crossed. And so we're gonna go, uh, go ahead start tightening these up you might think well this is pretty straightforward but there's some methodology to it first you have to make the tire make sure the tire is nice and centered after you put in the two lugs make sure it's nice and even on the drum back there so it's lined up you know it's lined up So just sort of hand tighten these. And then uh, the tire's still off the ground, but put your hand up here, hold it on the side, and give them a little tighten. And you have to work across. Here, go over here. Hold the tire, give it some good jabs there, move down, because there is a sequence to this. Give that a tighten, move over here, and give this a tighten. Okay, so they're you might want to go back and check. Make sure everything is sort of hand tight as, as you can do. And then what we have to do to finalize this, we have to lower the car down and uh, we'll give it the final tightening. And with these aluminum type rims, you want to do about probably, uh, if you have a torque wrench, it would be great. I can show you that. and. Probably about 90 PSI and no more than 120. I mean, aluminum rims are pretty delicate, so they're a little bit lower on the uh, pounds per square inch tightening scale. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll get moving. Okay, we have the lug nuts snugged up as best we could while the car's off the ground. Now we're just gonna remove the jack stand, pop the jack it up a little bit. Pull up the jack stand, which you should have for safety. And now we can go ahead, lower it down as gentle as possible. There we go. 
very, very important to come back at this point. Again, if you can get a torque wrench, that would be perfect. About 90, I'm gonna say 100 pounds on these. I mean, don't quote me, if something goes wrong, you're in trouble, but probably 100 PSI on a torque wrench. But I've done this enough that uh, I kinda know how it feels on this particular wrench or And remember to move opposite. Okay, I think it's uh, looking good. Now, on to the next step. So what you need to do now um, I have not replaced the center cap right here because what I want to do is back the car up several times and apply the brakes. I'll also apply the parking brake a few times and then we're going to come back and make sure these have not loosened up. Very important, especially uh, it's different if you just change a tire, but since we took that drum off, we have to come back and certainly make sure that these are still tight after a little bit of driving so let's go do that okay I have the car running what I'm gonna do is do some uh, backup and drive forward apply the brake each time uh, when you're backing up apply the brake hard and uh, that's going to adjust the, uh, the brake system and then there's a little bit of a last uh, thing to finish up with that's the parking brake to get it adjusted but uh, we'll get there just hang around Watch what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, so we did a little bit driving. Went back and forth, applied the brakes uh, going backwards. That's going to adjust this system. And it's very important, especially if you've taken off this drum, uh, to recheck the tightness of the lug nuts. So I do, it's not necessary, but I do have a, a torque wrench and I've set it to about 100. Normally you need to be at about 90. Uh, 90 to well it's a it's aluminum so you have to be careful about 90 pounds and just double check these uh, make sure that you know at least about 90 to 100 pounds per square inch for the torque so that one's good go across again over here For some reason this one doesn't, doesn't want to go on. Could happen. Okay, I'll show you how to fix that. I'm just gonna take this edge here. Make sure it's on there. I don't know why it didn't want to go on. Honestly. I'm gonna go over here. Okay, so we're all good. Final step. Well, next final step. Put this thing back on. Just snaps into place. And now we'll move to the final step here. Okay, here we are in the vehicle. And now we want to adjust the parking brake. So basically what I was saying, even if you haven't had to replace your brakes or anything but if your brake lever goes like this it needs adjusting so again you saw in the 
beginning how I took this boot off. Move that back there. And there's a bolt and a nut. So we want to start tightening this up, tightening this up clockwise. Do a few turns here. Then we'll just check it. Okay, it's still it's still floppy. So keep turning. Okay, it's starting to firm up now. That's good. Um, it's probably almost really good, actually, right now. But I'm just going to give it a little bit more. Okay, that feels really good. So now it should nicely move. It should start clicking right away. There you have it. Try this a few times. Yeah, it feels good. So we're just gonna leave it like that. And just put the boot back on. It just pushes it into place. There we go, that seems really good. Not a lot of play there, so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of work to do this. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate the thumbs up and the subscriptions. Uh, you know, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. But anyways, take care everyone. I hope this helped and uh, have a great day. Okay, so I'm back from a drive and one thing you wanna do, of course after you initially have taken off tires and put them back on, Go for a drive make sure they're all go through all the tires make sure the lug nuts are still good uh, but since I put new brakes in now do this very carefully with your hand because uh, these can get very hot you can burn yourself like right away but sort of put your hand there and sort of feel for heat and it should be a reasonable heat it shouldn't be so hot that you'd be afraid to even touch it um, and what I found is this one you know, normally it will adjust itself by backing up, going forward, uh, applying the parking brake a few times. And this one, it did not adjust properly. So it's just a little bit too much friction in there for, I'm not happy with it. So, uh, can't really get around it. I'm gonna jack this up and pop the tire off and uh, I'll manually adjust it a little bit more. I mustn't have turned it enough when I uh, put it back on. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the tire off, and so I'm just turning this, and it, for some reason, it tightened up too much. Like, that's just too much friction in there. So I'm gonna try to pop this off, and uh, we'll see what's going on. So this is my concern. You can adjust this while it's on the car by spinning it, but I'm gonna take this off, because I know this has to come in like a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna guess at least that much. Let's just pop this out. So just, I could do this while it's in there, but <clears throat> I wanna show you sort of what I'm talking about. Just separate the shoe here, get that out. Okay, so, I'm gonna go get a little bit of grease and I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on these threads. And I'm gonna screw this in, probably about a quarter of an inch. So let's go get that grease. Okay, so I turned this thing in a lot and so let's just place this into its location here. You may have to pull out on the shoe. There we 
go. Let's see if this drum fits on before I put the spring on. Okay, so I think that's gonna be better. At least it goes on nice and easy. Okay. So, I don't know, I guess it was just too, the, the shoes were too, too spread apart and it was maybe too far for it to sort of automatically adjust. I don't know. I'm kind of just speculating because I never really had trouble with these, but um, get this thing in. And let's get the spring on. I don't know, we'll get it together and we'll do some testing. That's all we can do. I think it's I think it's gonna be good. Um let's make sure everything looks like it's lined up nice. See if this drum still fits on. There's a little bit of, but that's not always that, it's not abnormal to be, but at least you can, as long as you can turn it easily, should be fine. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna go get my hands cleaned up a bit and then I'll put this tire on. We'll do some test driving. <laughs> 